So now we'll go with identifying and establishing relationship between classes. What we have done in our previous presentation, we just went and established a class in UML. And we also used Orgo UML to convert this particular class to code. Now what we are going to do is, in object oriented designing, what is the major concept? It is bottom up design, right? What do you mean by bottom up design? You identify all the classes and then you establish the relationship between these classes. Because classes should somehow be related. Only then it becomes a system. So that is called bottom up designing. The first thing is you identify all the classes, plot that in Orgo UML. Next thing is you identify the relationship between classes, how these classes are related. So your final diagram, so I'm just showing you a sample diagram here. There may be some issues within the diagram, but uh, that's, 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 this is just for your understanding. So you have to identify all the classes and then you have to relate all the classes. Types of relationships between classes. This is a pure object oriented programming concept. We have already learned this in uh, Java and other C++ uh, programming languages. So we can say inheritance or the another name given to this is generalization in UML. When you talk about UML, UML uses generalization to represent inheritance. Realization, this is for implementing your interfaces. Association is just linking two classes to each other. Aggregation, one class containing another class. Or one class holding the object of another class. Composition is again a stronger form of aggregation. Dependency is one class being dependent on another class for its implementation. So these are the relationships that we are going to establish between classes. We will see how these things work. We will start with generalization or inheritance. Why we use inheritance? For code reusability. And uh, it is a very important object oriented programming concept. What will a class inherit from its uh, base class? It will inherit all the protected data items and public data items. Okay. So new classes can be built using the existing classes. So when you say two classes are having an inheritance relationship, when you talk about is a relationship between classes. So you establish classes and if there is an is a relationship, you say there is inheritance. For instance, professor is a faculty. So the relationship here is inheritance or you can say that is generalization according to UML standards. Shape, circle. Circle is a shape. Dog is an animal. I am just giving you some examples for inheritance. Fruit is an instrument. So, we have various types of inheritance and I am not going to teach all these inheritance and what they are in this class. You can go and very well look at uh, my presentation on inheritance and you can further understand inheritance from this particular link. So I have taken very detailed, I have given a very detailed lecture using implementation of inheritance in Java, the order of constructor calls and the use of super keyword and what is inheritance, what are the various uh, types of inheritance, how it is being implemented in Java to a very detailed level. I have given the link. <laughs> it's highly important that you go and understand how inheritance is getting implemented and all the various uh, properties of inheritance. So please go through these things. So what, what all things you learn from this is introduction to inheritance, advantages, types of inheritance and how they are implemented in Java. Say in Java, there is no support for multiple inheritance. How will you support multiple inheritance in Java if at all you wanted to support that? You go with interfaces. Right? You go with implementing multiple interfaces in your code. So that's how Java supports multiple inheritance. But in UML, UML directly there is a support for multiple inheritance. In UML, you can directly go and give multiple inheritance. So you have to go through this, you have to understand this in depth. If you have already understood that in your previous classes, it's fine. So UML notation for inheritance. How we represent inheritance in UML? Let's say this is the base class. And this is the child class or derived class. We can say anything here. So the notation is an arrow mark and this is the notation. You see here, the 
child class is inheriting from the base class. So, the direction of the arrow is to this side. The normal uh, mistake the student does is they will just put this arrow mark this side. So, such, that gives a different meaning. What it means? This is the base class, this is the child class. You are saying we are inheriting from this class. So, that should not be the case. See, these are standards that we have to follow. So, again, how many child classes or derived class we have? We have a child class here, which is going to inherit from this base class. So, again, what it will inherit from the base class, whether it will inherit the protected, public, private, what is going to inherit, how inheritance really works in Java, you have to understand that by going through that lecture. Okay? Because we do not have time to teach both Java and uh, UML for you. So, let us go and do a demo of inheritance in Orgo UML. It is very simple. Uh, let me show you how to go and create inheritance. Say, I have one class, I have another class and say this is the person class. Let me just put that person class. I have an attribute here and uh, say it is uh, username. Let me go and add a new attribute here. So, that attribute is nothing but an username. Let me just give username. Every person will have an username and uh, the type for this is string. So, let me go and take it as string and I am going to give it as protected because I am going to inherit this class in my another class. And uh, this is another class, this is an employee class. So, let me just go and give an employee. Employee is actually is a person, student is a person. So, you can have an inheritance here. How will you link inheritances? If you go and take a look at this, it will tell you new generalization. This is the link, you just click the arrow mark should be pointed here. That's it. So, you have created two classes and then you have shown an inheritance relationship between these two classes. If you go and generate code for this, say I want to generate code for both the classes here in Java. And then let me browse to a folder. Let me go to the desktop and let me put things out there. Let me create a new folder and say Java. Okay, let me select this folder, generate. Let us see how this code gets generated for this particular uh, uh, model that we have on the board. So, let us go to desktop and go to my desktop. Uh, this folder, instead of Java, it became JA, J -A -B -A. So, we have this person which is the base class. So, you have this public class person, protected string, username, because I have selected that, that is the code. And employee inherits from person, right? So, you just go and take a look at this particular code. It says public class employee extends person. So, extends is the keyword for inheritance in Java. It creates you code steps, the overall structure for your code, and you have to populate the algorithms within the methods. Okay. So, that is how you can model inheritance relationships. You can go with, see how easy is this tool. You can just go and model any uh, number of classes inheriting. You can model multiple inheritance, single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hybrid inheritance, all kinds of inheritance you can model. And within a click, you can generate the overall structure for your code using this tool. And the latest tools, they say they gener it generates the entire code. Too. I do not know how, but uh, they have a process wherein they can even model the algorithms and generate entire code for your what way this tool is useful in other in another sense is you see here generate all classes from the model I can generate code in C++, C Sharp, Java, PHP, PHP 5. I can also go with uh, SQL commands. A model is independent of the language. From the model, I can very well change the technology just like that. I want it in Java, I can create it in Java. I want it in C++, I can create it in C++. That's another flexibility we get. Are you all clear with inheritance relationships?